Vin Fai up next. Big Five, can you make your way up to the stage, please? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Bob McDermott. I'm head of sales for the Bit5 Pod5 project. And I've been asked to introduce our technical genius, Antonio Oliveira. But I have to throw in a little tiny story just before we do that. Last night, we were having a geek out session that would have rivaled Edison and Marconi talking about power usage, control, optimization and moving forward. The last time I saw a passion like this and talent like this was when I was in Cupertino in 1984 with Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. And someone from InfoWorld, I believe, a young woman, asked Steve Jobs, what is, if there was no technology limits and if money wasn't an object, how would you design a personal computer? And at that day, in 1984, when the Mac was a very, very crude prototype and had just been introduced, he described this, down to the last screw. He talked about the OS, he talked about BSD, Unix, he talked about, quote, a kick-ass GUI, he talked about solid state. He was a visionary and a disruptor, and I was proud to know him. Now, and there's a little bit of a side story. He loaned me a very, very early Mac. I took it home and realized it needed a mouse pad. So I commercialized the mouse pad because it was necessary. A tiny disruption in a big world. But I was proud to do that, it was fun. And now after all these years, after running an ISP for a quarter of a century, I am now happy and delighted to be associated with a terrific team a ter uh, led by Robert Colazzo and a group of very fine workmen and women who, are, who have this vision and are driving forward. I have not seen this vision and passion since the 80s. So I simply wanted to introduce our CTO, the genius behind it, Antonio Oliveira. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you. 
This is Bob. He invented the mouse pad. We all have one, right? So what we have here is a modular solution that allows you to deploy, quickly deploy, effectively quickly deploy your data center anywhere where you see fit, or where you have your cheap power. The issues with brick and mortar solutions is that you can't simply pick up a warehouse after you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to build an infrastructure to move to another state or another country where you have cheaper power. Uh, most people are spending anywhere on the north of three to four hundred thousand dollars per megawatt of deployment, which that equates roughly about 600 miners. And this solution that we have, the module solution, it's something that we cut in half, less than half, with a quicker time, much quicker time frame, and also with the efficient infrastructure needed for the machines to be able to operate. Right, these machines, the miners, as you guys see, some of these that are on. They're hot, they're loud, they require a specific air flow to keep them working efficiently. And thankfully with the container solution, we are able to do that as these things are kind of like Legos. You have the flexibility, flexibility, flexibility to do whatever you like with them. Um, we don't have the picture anymore. Uh, the containers that we have also allows you to operate them in a 415 volt, which is what a lot of the miners are going to nowadays. And that passes about 20% of efficiency on the cost of electricity to the client. One of the biggest issues with Bitcoin mining nowadays or any cryptocurrency mining nowadays is that the cost of power continually, continues to rise as local power companies are kind of trying to jack up the rates. And unfortunately for the ones, again, that build brick and mortars, you can't just relocate somewhere else. So this is something that actually happened to us, and we were trying to find a solution to be able to continue our growth, and the modular setup is doing that for us. Um, if you guys have any questions or would like to learn anything about the product, you're always welcome to come by our booth and speak with us. And that's pretty much it. Bob? Thank you, Antonio. I want to reiterate a couple of quick things. Since the beginning, we re, uh, miners have been using conventional structures, steel buildings, wood, wood structures, brick and mortar. There, those of us that were there at the beginning risked life and limb with GPUs and fires. I wonder if some of you remember about that. And as mines have increased in size, commercial installations have become necessary. And the buildings that were designed to be warehouses and factories just are not suited long term for mining, mostly because of the air handling. And a good, a well constructed container takes care of the air handling issue, reducing the cost, making it easier to manage. Another thing to, uh, to consider as the mining industry matures, permits and inspections are going to be more of a problem. A lot of mining operations are running under the radar that are running facilities that are unlicensed and without permits. This will slowly end, trust me. As local municipalities discover this and power companies, practical and legal problems can follow. Usually they're not serious, but they can lead to shutdowns and you know, some costs. We find, because of the nature of the portability of the containers, we, we find that processing, licensing, permits are easier and we can find, we find it smoother. I think one of the bi biggest advantages is that we can be gypsies. Miners can take a, a, a container and move them anywhere. Some of you may know that in Washington, power costs were contracted at a certain rate, and they are, the power companies arbitrarily raise the rate, sometimes doubling. I can't imagine anything better than to back in the flatbed truck, pick it up, and take it where we're welcome. Anyway. I want to thank you, and I hope we get a chance to meet you all at our, uh, our booth and answer your questions. Again, thanks for being here. One more point we would like to get across is most miners, most mining farms anywhere, has a, they have a, a lack of efficiency as these machines and the technology is not something that is fully breakthrough yet. Um, with our product, we provide a software management, a management software that allows you to quickly and efficiently make sure that your mining farm is operating at the most that you can. 
At the end of the day, when you spend the money and the infrastructure to build something that will consume one megawatt of power, to consume roughly 600 miners, to have 600 miners operating and drawing that power, right? You would like to have something that will work for that many machines. Otherwise, the money that you spend, you're spending is for something that you're not getting in return. We are trying to build a standard concept for mining. Just, lo just like in class A data centers, you have your server racks and you have your constant, you know, your airflow from fresh air from the bottom, your cool air, HVAC air from the bottom, hot air through the top or through the back. There are many standards in the data center world, but on the crypto mining data center world, there isn't a standard. Everybody's just, you know, free for all. Everybody does what they believe it is the best efficient way to operate their farms. And a lot of people crashes when it comes to the summer. Summer is when our phones and our emails are, you know, blasted from all the fellow miners around the industry, the communities, asking for help, asking for a solution that allows for them to deploy the farms and be able to have the machines working, right? Because what's the point if when it comes around summer and you have to turn off your farms, you have to, you know, your machines just starts burning or breaking down and, you know, the cost for you to run a facility to operate in this way is not efficient, it's a headache, it's stressful. And it's something that we unfortunately have to walk through that path over the past few years as there isn't a handout. This is not something that, you know, unfortunately we can go to school and learn. It's something that we learn on the field, on the job, hands-on training. And luckily we're, we found a chemistry between, a good balance between all the components that we have inside of the pod that allows for the environment, the internal environment for the machines to be just enough to allow the machines to operate. Um, through the heat, we had you know hot temperature last week, heat wave up north of up to 110 degrees. That's really hot to be able to bring the fresh air in for the machines to work. You know we utilize a temperature control evaporative cooler that allows for the air that passes through that goes inside of the pod to lower its temperature about 30 to 40 degrees, and that allows for the miners to operate with the fresh air efficiently with a lower cost of infrastructure set up. So we're trying to take away that stress from people and make it easy for you to be able to operate. Thank you.